Hello, everybody. How you doing? And welcome to another little episode of uh, first look, if you will, of a game that we ended up playing on stream, which is called Once Human. Now, um, we got a little bit of a little disclosure of a little bit of information about how we were playing and things like that. We'll go through all that. First of all, make sure you hit that subscribe button here and the like at, at the end of the video to uh, enjoy us, uh, you know, enjoy the video and see when we uh, end up putting more videos out. We put out many videos out all throughout the week, shorts, so on and so forth. But we want to make sure you end up catching them all and seeing them all because that's what we love to do here. So now to get into the information about uh, about um, Once Human. Now, Once Human, you play as a pretty much a metahuman uh, that is sent to kind of fix the worlds. Now, apparently there is a rift within these worlds where these demons are coming in and you are going in to essentially repair them and stop them from coming in. Uh, you have powers uh, that allow you to do that. You meet other people that have powers and so on and so forth. Now, uh, it is a multiplayer game, uh, so you can team up with friends and do so. Now, there's a couple of very unique elements of this game, which I kind of wanted to talk about. This isn't the standard type of shooter game, if you will. Now, I kind of went into it very blind. Uh, a couple of people in the stream was kind of like, oh, you really need to check this game out. You need to see it. Play it a little bit. So I was like, okay, sure, no problem. I'll do it for you guys. So I end up going in and playing it, and they're like, oh, it's like Division. I I didn't feel that. Um, people are like, oh, it's kind of like a you know a survival game, and I'm like, what? So uh, there's a lot of different elements that are thrown into this game that really make it interesting and different. As of right now, for me to play up to, I, I played up to level ten. Uh, I'm kind of talking about it from that perspective. I'm going to try to get some more hours into it before the end of the beta and kind of talk about it at the end. Now, from what I ended up seeing, there's a lot more crafting than you would think in this type of a game. I thought I was going to be going into it very similar to the way the division is, which is you find your gear, you find your weapons and so on and so forth. Now, there's different areas throughout the whole entire location where you have to pretty much attune to those areas to stop the, the, the demons from coming in, essentially. So once you end up doing that, you kind of have less of a problem dealing with those, um, with those characters. So you end up having that. <coughs> you end up having that. You also have lots of different monsters of many different scales all over the place. The monsters were very weird, um, which was cool. I thought that the monsters were very unique and very cool. You get these, how, how else should I put it? Like there's just, there was just so much about the game that just, it didn't click in my head hundred percent and it kind of like it took me a little bit to kind of play it and understand it that's why i'm kind of just throwing out a lot of information at once so let me try to segment it you kind of go into the world you learn your tutorial you kind of go through that process after that you're brought into the world and you have to find a place to put your your home essentially and then once you put your home down you have to craft around it and you get your crafting and you learn how to you know make a better axe and make a like better weapons, better arrows and things like that. And a crossbow. So you get that, that like, I guess you could say base information and then you finish that. And then, you know, you learn that you have skill trees. So you essentially have skill trees, which allow you to advance your abilities within yourself for, Crafting, resources, oh, uh, by the way, you have to worry about your food, your hunger, your thirst, your, all that stuff, your stamina, and your health, and your sanity. So there's multiple different bars you have to remember 
to keep an eye on. So you have to learn multiple different things there. You have, you have to learn to do better base defenses because you can put yourself on a PVE um, server or a PVP server, which means you can know other people can come and raid your bases. So you have that. Um, so you go through this portion of learning, you know, your base, your base information there. And then they tell you, Oh, go to like this location You go to another location. And it's pretty much just an area where you essentially have to do many objectives to learn things. So you learn how to like, you know, you learn about opening up weapons, caches and, and also you learn about, you know, picking up different materials and things like that. And after you do that, you go back to the base and they're like, Oh, we need you to teach you how to dismantle it because you know, you need to make scrap metal and you know, plastics and things like that. And then you got to build a piece of material that allows you to like break that stuff down. So then you break all that stuff down and everything's like, Oh, this is great. Everything works great. Fine. Yay. And then you kind of go back out into the world, if you will. And then you go out and do something else. And then you can kind of come back to your base. So the, the end of the tutorial, you learn that you get these, I'm forgetting the name of them, but they're almost like advanced creatures that connect to you and you can use them to help you fight larger and more difficult enemies. So they have like limited time out. They have the ability to heal you. They have the ability to attack. They have depending upon the creature. So you have like these other types of beings that you have to take care of. And when you destroy bosses in the dungeons, which I'll get to that, you'll end up taking, you'll, you'll end up finding one, taking them, and then you can nurture them and make them grow and make them stronger and so on and so forth. So it, it really does have this, you know, this different feel to it. So that was kind of very interesting. So my buddy Tim told me, don't make a decision on what this game is or how it feels or what it looks like until after you get past the first dungeon boss. Now I've played a little bit of early, early on destiny two. Uh, when it came to PC, I played a lot of division, a lot of division two. I'm, I'm pretty decent at first person shooters. I, when I was a kid, I used to play call of duty nonstop. So I kind of know how to deal with certain scenarios when, when fighting bosses like this. So I learned that the boss doesn't come. I'll, I'll show a short clip of it here. And I did very much easily kill it. It said you need to be in a party of two and at least a level 10 to defeat this boss. I went in by myself and I think I was a level eight when I went in. So I figured out the points of where I could be safe zones, so on and so forth. And I pretty much just dwindled the boss's health down. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is ridiculous. This is scary. Easy. I was like, I don't understand this. And then after a certain portion of his health goes down, he gets into a part where you can't touch him, but he has, he like lets all of these mobs spawn up and attack you. I very easily killed those guys, went in, took down the spawners, ran back. Um, and it was just, it, it just repeated a couple of times. And it was just, the first boss I thought was very easy. I'm hoping because it is alpha. Uh, I think it's considered, is it alpha or considered beta? I think it might be beta that it's just made that way because of beta. Um, and I will say that there, that, you know, that it, it was the monster boss you fought was pretty cool. I thought it had really good capabilities and, and really cool skills and things like that. Thought the room, the room was really cool and well done. Uh, I think the animations in the game are really, really well done. I think that the graphics, you know, are pretty good. Uh, people say that you have to be really, really careful because they're burning video cards. Um, <clears throat> so that's another thing. Um, I will say that as the metahuman, you do get to pick up things of the, the demons and enemies that you kill that you can end up using against them. 
Like if you get a briefcase, it shoots things. Uh, you can actually pick up the minigun for that boss and use them to shoot the boss and stuff like that to do damage. So you have those things too. And like I said, overall, the game is pretty cool. Um, is it something for me? I don't, I don't think so. While it's still in beta, I'm going to try to push myself a couple of levels and see if I can get to the other zones. See how much different it is. Uh, because I said that there's just so many levels of it that just... Uh, there, it just, uh, it just so many. It just makes me want to topple over and just be like, ugh, like why? Like why are we gonna? Like why am I gonna do this to myself? It's just, it's just too much. So, um, I think that that's something that's really noteworthy because the game is just really filled with a lot of stuff. If you like survival games, of uh, like Ark, um, like Enshrouded, like things like that, you're gonna like this type of game. Um, if you're thinking about it, like if you like division, if you like, um, call of duty, if you like games like that, you're probably not going to fully enjoy this because of the crafting side. It's too much crafting. If you're just looking to get into action, like once after once after boom, 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 one after another, one after another, that's me. I prefer to be able to go from action to action to action. I don't want to have to go back, build up my thing. Like that's... That's what always gets me in survival games is that I got to like sit there and deal with like crafting things and building them. I was like, ugh, that's just not my cup of tea. But like I said, is it worth buying? It all depends upon you. If you are the type of person that likes survival games, then yeah, you're going to like it. If you like division and call of duty type games, probably not. The, the thing that kind of keeps ticking in my head is it makes me almost feel like it's Daisy, but it's like not exactly Daisy. It, there's like the way that Tim described it to me was he's like, it's a mashup of, um, of like remnant pal world because of the crafting, um, division and, 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 I was and scum. That's how he kind of like put it. That's how he kind of explained it. And I was just like, that's too many game mashups for me. Um, but I will we'll probably make another video about the things I learned early on in the game that will definitely help you guys uh, for the future when you do decide to play it. Um, but overall, it's, it, over overall, I probably will not be purchasing this game. But like I said, if you enjoy that stuff, you should pick it up. So. All right, thanks again, Lord PD TV. I'm here every single Monday through Friday on Twitch.tv. Please come check us out. I greatly appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button here. Follow us on Twitch. If you're looking to support the channel, you know, there's multiple ways to do it. Please check the links below. I greatly appreciate it and thank you all. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your week. And uh, I will see you all soon. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Really? Really, screen shake? You're gonna do me like that?
Last arrow. Last bar. Yeah, he does, but I just can't get to it. I'd rather not... <coughs> I'd rather not mess with the, uh... with the dynamics. Not gonna lie, my hands are really sweaty. Victory!